Our speaker this morning, Sherry Harney, is, uh, well, she edits books, she writes books, she collaborates with her husband on small group Bible studies, uh, some 60, for people such as John Ortberg, uh, Dallas Willard, Gary Thomas, Randy Frazee. She's the mother of three adult sons. And you, you know Kevin, Kevin's been here about three times. We love Kevin. Uh, if you love Kevin, you're really gonna love Sherry. Sherry is a dear friend, uh, a woman of God and of prayer. And uh, I, I just, I look at these two people, I've known them for about 20 years, and I just struck me, my heavens, what a talented couple this is. But it's not about talent. Uh, I, I can testify that their hearts uh, are why I bring them here to Westmont. So, Sherry, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad Kevin's with you, and he's sitting, and uh, this time, and you're speaking. So let's welcome Sherry Harney to Westmont College. Thank you. Yes, I don't have tear-off pajamas. Do you remember that? <laughs> or candy that I'm going to throw out. But I want to assure you, I do have one prop, so be ready. I am thankful to be here with you this day. I, Kevin and I live in Monterey, California right now, but I was born and raised in Holland, Michigan, actually the city that we met, yes. And I am able to get back there, usually twice a year to visit my parents. They still live there. And when I enter into their home, I become part of their routine. And one of the things that happens in their home is my father gets up early in the morning and he finds his way into the living room and I have a picture. Now I want you to know that he does not know that I took this picture of him. He will not be happy about this. But he's so sweet there, that's my, that's my daddy. And um, he prays every morning there for each one of his kids, each one of his grandkids, for a number of people, and he reads the Bible. Well, after he's done with that time in the morning, then he gets ready, and it doesn't matter what the weather is, whether it's raining, snowing, sleeting, he walks five miles every morning. And so when I'm there, I join him. So two weeks ago when I was there, we went for a walk. Oh, there I am. <laughs> now, I actually took the picture because I wanted to capture the snow. It was a beautiful winter day. Well, my dad and I were walking, and as we neared the end of our walk, I said, hey, Dad, I'm going to be flying out tonight. Do you mind if we just, um, before we hit, hit home, do you mind if we just spend some time praying together? He said, that'd be great. So while we're walking, we start praying. All of a sudden, he starts to push me over into the snowbank. And I'm thinking to myself, now, it was like it happened in slow motion. All this went through my mind as I was falling into the snowbank. There's only one reason why my dad would push me into a snowbank. And as I'm thinking that thought, as I'm leaning into the snowbank, I actually turn to see the car that I suppose is coming that he is saving me from. So I lean back, there is no car. Mind you, I'm doing this all while I'm falling. And then I turn back to see what in the world has happened. And I realize that my dad closed his eyes when I said, let's pray. And he <laughs> knocked me over. I said, Dad, you can't close your eyes and pray when you're walking. You have to keep your eyes open. And we laughed so hard, we brushed the snow off. And I said, Dad, thank you for my opening story at Westmont. Because the title of my talk that I'm working on right now is Praying With Your Eyes Open. The next day, I flew back home. This is the email I got from my dad. Dear Sherry, it was very short. Dear Sherry, I thought about you this morning while I was walking. I prayed with my eyes open. I even prayed out loud. I learned from you that if I can pray with my eyes open, my time with God is limitless. He got it. What is prayer? In its simplest form, it's about being with God. It's talking with God. It's listening to God. It's about being in his presence. When Kevin and I were raising our three sons, and they are your age, they're 22, 24, 26 now, when we raised the boys, we wanted them to be 
people of prayer. But one of the things we wanted to teach them that while it is important to pray with your eyes closed, we would tell them, you know, the Bible never tells you you have to pray with your eyes closed, but what it does is it helps us to focus on God. It helps us to be free from the distractions that can take us away from really understanding the presence of God among us. But we would say to them, but we want you to get something else, that you can pray to God at any point, at any time in the day, and you better have your eyes open during some of those moments. So one of the ways that I taught our boys was on Sunday mornings. Kevin would go early. He would be uh, going to church early because he was going to be preaching. So I would get in the car when they were little, even as they were growing up, and we would always pray, all of us with our eyes open, on the seven-minute drive to the church. I wanted our boys to realize, I wanted them to be mindful of God's presence all the time. And then if they pray with their eyes open, they can too understand that their time with God knows no limits. I love the hymn, In the Garden. I was actually at a shop and I found this hymn etched in this plaque, and so I bought it. It sits on my desk every single day. The reason why I love this hymn is the chorus. Listen to it. And he walks with me, and he talks with me. I need to be reminded that every day I am walking and talking with Jesus. But I think I love this chorus the most because of the next line. And he tells me I am his own. I think so, so many times in our lives we get caught up with what we think God wants to tell us. And it's usually a correction, a way we need to grow more. But I love the reminder of this hymn for me is that fundamentally, foundationally, he just wants me to know that he loves me, that I am his own. I was raised in a Christian home. I went to a Christian college. I've loved the Lord. But somewhere along the way, I kind of lost sight of some of that passion that God has for me in my passion to try to live for him. I went to a youth specialties conference, and the main speaker was sick, and they had to call someone last minute. Now, this was, you know, a couple of decades ago. They called on Brennan Manning. I'm so grateful that the Lord had Brennan Manning speak that day because he told a story that would change my life. He tells the story of a priest from Detroit named Edward Farrell. And Edward had a two-week vacation coming up, and so he had decided that he would go to Ireland and visit his one living uncle, who would be celebrating his 80th birthday. On that great day, on his uncle Seamus' 80th birthday, they got up. They didn't say a word to one another. They took a walk along the shores and while they were walking into the sunrise, enjoying the silence of the moment, all of a sudden, this 80-year-old, now 80-year-old uncle, began to skip. He was just skipping away. Edward Farrell looked at his face, and he saw this huge smile. He was radiant. He was beaming. He yelled out to his uncle, Uncle Seamus, you look really happy. Uncle Seamus said, I am, lad. Do you want to know why? He said, yes. He said, you see, Miaba is fond of me. My daddy is fond of me. I don't know what happened to me. I was about 23, 24 years old, accepted Christ at five, but something broke in me. I went back to our hotel, and I don't, I don't like to tell people this, but I wept. I wept for about two hours because somehow, as Brennan Manning shared that story and he captured 
how that story captured his heart. And he began to live in this life of knowing that the father was fond of him, that it brought new joy. Somehow I could see that joy in him, and by the work of the Holy Spirit, I felt it too. And I have to tell you, I have not lost it. It was a spiritual moment for me when God spoke plainly and said that I am fond of you. It's my prayer today that maybe I can be that voice from God to you today. I know the kind of student you are. I know you are high achievers. You work hard. And you love the Lord, no doubt. But sometimes in that pursuit, we lose sight of what God wants to give to us and the love that he just wants us to receive. The Father is fond of you. I hope you know that. I'm going to pray that if you don't today, maybe your life will be changed like my was at your age. You know, there's a thread throughout the whole scripture of God saying to his people, I just want to be with you. You think about it. The beginning of time, the garden, he wanted to be with us. Throughout the Old Testament, when you find God's heart sad, it's sad because he sees his people straying away from his presence and his power. The heart of God in that moment says, I want you to get who I am in your life. New Testament, Jesus Christ, he was given so that we could be reconciled back to God. And for all eternity, heaven, the Lord desires to be with us forever and ever. That is the heart of your Father. Some of us need more accurate pictures of God, of how God feels about being with you. It took my five-year-old son to give me an even clearer picture of that. I remember the day, it was September 7, it was my 34th birthday, almost 20 years ago. I was, like my father, having my quiet time early in the morning about 6 o'clock, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eyes, I saw Josh, our middle son, five, try to sneak past me. Now, he wasn't doing a very good job, but I let him think he did. And he went past me, and he went into Kevin's and my bedroom, went into the closet, and I could hear him shuffling. And I thought to myself, I wonder if he knows it's my birthday. I knew I had, you know, a card stash in my closet. So I waited. Sure enough, here he came. In one hand, he had his school box, and he had this card. It said, happy birthday, for which I was grateful. It didn't say, in sympathy. (laughs) He picked the right card. When I opened it up, I love this. You can't see it, but I'll tell you. Instead of mom, he always mixed up his W's and M's. It said, wow. (laughs) It was a great way to start my 34th birthday, wow. And then in, in, in kind of scribbly writing, he writes, I love you. That was enough. That's all I needed. Wow, I love you. That would have been a good enough gift but it gets better. He hands me his, his school box. Now, I'm a mom, and I'm seeing, oh, he's giving me his best box. I'm thinking, how can I get it back to him? Because I know how much he loves it. But then I realized as I opened the box that this was a huge gift of love, and I didn't want to lessen his gift to me. There were four items in the box. Now, I knew that the day before I had seen a quarter sitting on his desk. So this little boy went to his room and found all the money that he had, and he put it in my box. Thank you, Josh, for giving me all the money that you have right now. You gave me your favorite car. Josh, I know you love this car because it's little. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) 
Now, this was, you know, 20 some years ago, and at that time, we did get the boys, Game Boys, I don't want you to feel sorry for my sons, but when they were little, they just had little toys that they could bring into the car. And so this was kind of his car toy. Now I realized the magnitude of this gift. I got all the money, I got his favorite car, I got his favorite car toy. Could it get better? Oh, it did. <laughs> this is the exact box. I still have everything as I, as I received it. A pair of handcuffs. Okay, now I'm a school teacher. I taught second grade for three years, so I am a little skilled in trying to figure out what children are coloring or drawing and, and do it in a kind way. So I said to Josh, Josh, how thoughtful of you. <laughs> well, what were you thinking <laughs> when you put the handcuffs into my box? He's a shy boy. He could hardly look at me, and he said, well, Mom, I was thinking since it's your birthday, if you put one on your wrist and I put the other one on my wrist, we could spend the whole day together. <laughs> I've gotten lots of presents in my life, but that is the best present that I've ever received. Do you know what happened? Something very deep, deeply spiritual happened for me in that moment. God spoke to my heart, and this is what God said to me. In my heart, he said, Sherry, do you know the joy you feel right now? I said, yes, Lord. I couldn't be happier. That was the best gift anybody has ever given to me. He said to me, that's how I feel. When you come to me and you just say, I just want to be with you, the heart of God, the heart of God, he just wants to be with you. When I pray with my eyes open, I become more aware that my time with God is limitless. The scriptures teach us a lot about prayer. There's a two-word verse, and it's not Jesus wept. It's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray continually. Another two-word verse. Pray continually. Now, I don't know about you, but when I've read that verse, I have to be honest with you, I just find it exhausting. Pray continually. I just kind of skim over how in the world am I ever going to live up to that? But you know what I'm teaching you today? It's not about what you do. It's about God's presence with you. That's how you pray continually. It's not that you have to, it's that you get to. I love the passage when Moses meets God in the burning bush. Exodus 3.11. God speaks to Moses and he says, you're my man. I'm calling you to lead the people out of slavery. Moses has two questions. He gets the same answer. The first question is, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? I love God's answer. He doesn't say, well, let me share with you your credentials. Or he doesn't even say, you know what? You are the chosen one. He says this. His answer to that is, I will be with you. That's it. It's not about you, but it's about me being with you. That's what praying with your eyes wide open is about you have the God of the universe who says, I will be with you. When I pray with my eyes open, I can pray continually. I was thinking about the place that you are right now in your life and how this might look practically in your life. You know, before an exam, you are good at praying. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> but what if you really got hold of this concept of God being with you at all times so that when you sign up, you register 
for that class, you begin to say, God, I want to be taught. I want to learn. Please help me. When you go to the class on Monday or Tuesday, to be talking with God and saying, God, please help me to receive the information that I need to retain so that I can use this information to glorify you. Lord, please help me. It changes the way we live our lives. When I pray with my eyes open, I can pray continually. Now, there's more that can happen when we pray with our eyes open. We can find out that God wants to speak to us, and if we have our eyes open, he can speak to us at any time. A few years ago, when I was living in Byron Center in Michigan, I got a call from my mom, and she let me know that our aunt, her aunt, my great aunt, Zelma, was being placed in a hospice center by my house. And I remembered when my mom told me, I right away said, Lord, please, I, I want to minister to Aunt Zelma. I know that out of her three boys, only one is living. She doesn't have a lot of family. So I prayed. I said, Lord, help me. Well, I kind of got busy, and then I think, oh, maybe I should go visit Aunt Zelma. I went three separate times, and all three times I couldn't get in to see her whether she was gone out of the room, um, someone was, some, the pastor was visiting her. And as I'm walking out, I start talking with God because that's what I do. I pray with my eyes open sometimes. And I laughed. I said to God, boy, God, my timing is horrible. I said, if you want to use me, would you just please let me know? Somehow I'm not getting it right. Well, about a week later, I'm at the dry cleaners. And I just have this sense. It's about dinner time. Normally I'm going home. I had this sense, I was supposed to go visit Aunt Zelma, and I thought, well, I asked the Lord to show me, I'm just going to go. I go, I get there, and the nurse says, we're so glad you're here. Her son just left to go to a Christmas program for his uh, grandchild, and she's taken a turn for the worse. Thank you, Lord. So I sat with my Aunt Zelma for two hours. I read her psalms. I sang hymns. And as I saw her struggling at the end, her son did not show up. I saw her struggling at the end. I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, is there anything that else I can read? And it just came to me, a passage that somebody had given to me when I was hurting. So I opened up my Bible and I said, Aunt Selma, that's okay. I want to read Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? She looked at me. She closed her eyes and she died. Peacefully. She went home to be with her Lord. I went to the funeral a few days later and the pastor got up and he started the service by saying, Zelma Remersma loved God's word. So many passages she loved, but she loved this passage. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Same passage. The Lord knew. You see, if we can pray with our eyes open, we not only better our lives because we got God and his power with us all the time, but we can make a difference in other people's lives. I want to end my time by talking about a way, a new way that I'm learning how to pray with my eyes open. And that's actually texting prayers. Not just texting, I'm praying for you, but literally texting prayers. I do that with my eyes open. I have a good friend, and some of you know her. She's one of my closest friends. Her name is Betsy Davis. She is Nick Davis's mom. When Nick's life ended a couple of months ago here, I began to pray, Lord, how can I help my friend as she goes through such a time of mourning and deep loss? And one of the things God put on my heart was just to text her, text her prayers, text her, text her scriptures. I've been doing that. 
one day, it was February 9, I just felt that I needed to text her this prayer. Dear God, thank you for your sustaining grace to the Davis family. Please continue to show your love and grace in tangible ways in their lives. We are dependent on you. She responded a little later. She said, Sherry, your prayers for God to show his love in tangible ways were answered. I went to the mailbox today, and in the mailbox was a quilt from a church in Louisiana that had heard through a family member about Nick's accident and the Davises' loss. And this whole church, who the Davises do not know, one person who attends the church made this quilt and sent it, and it came that day. That same day, she got a CD in the mail from a young woman who is also mourning the loss of a loved one. She said, Sherry, the Lord answered that prayer. And then finally, just a couple days ago, when I was working on this talk, while I was studying Exodus 3, I felt that God said, text the passage to Betsy. What happened was she prayed a prayer, and she let me in on the prayer. I want to end with this prayer. This is what I texted to her a few days ago. Betsy, reflect on this passage, Exodus 3.14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. As I was praying for you this morning, I felt I should send this verse because of the reminder of the present tense of God's name, I am. Betsy. God is the great I am, whatever you need today. This is what she texted back. She told me it was a profound moment, and she had this prayer with God in response to the text, and she texted it to me. She said, me, which is Betsy, I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God, I am your shepherd, and I am walking with you. Me, Betsy. It's so dark, I can't see the end. God, I am light, and I will show you light enough to make your way through this valley onto a spacious place full of light. Amen. I'm so glad that I've learned to pray with my eyes open. I hope today this will challenge you that you will find that when you pray with your eyes open, your time with God is limitless. You can pray continually, and God will be able to speak to you at any time and use you for his glory. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>